Hello everybody, welcome back to Universe Sandbox. So today we're doing part three of creating the solar system from memory. So we've already done all of the planets and the moons that I could remember. So today we're doing dwarf planets like Pluto, Ceres, Sedna, Haumea, Eris, Make Make. We're also going to try to do some human made objects like the Tesla Roadster, the Parker Solar Probe, Voyager 1 and 2, and the New Horizons spacecraft. So let's get right into it. All right, so here we are in my custom solar system that I made from memory. If you missed part one and two, click the card in the top right of the screen and go and watch those first and then come back to this one. So I think we need to start with Pluto. So I do know that Pluto is kind of beyond Neptune, but I feel like its orbit kind of crosses in the Neptune orbit. I do know that I put Neptune too far out when I, I found that out while editing the last one. So Pluto is, oh, I don't know how big it is. I'm going to start with a random moon and kind of put it here and then we'll have to adjust its orbit. Pluto, and then I want its orbit to kind of cross in a little bit. Kind of like that. Oh, I feel like it's also tilted. Like a little bit, maybe like that. Okay, that's what I'm going with for Pluto for its orbit. Okay, now for the size of Pluto. What is this one we have here? 30% of the moon. I feel like it's a little bit smaller. I'm going to go with 15% of the moon size, 0.15. Um, so once again, the real values will pop up on screen so you guys know how wrong I am. So that's what I'm guessing for Pluto is 15% the mass of our moon. Okay, and then now for the visuals on Pluto, I do kind of know what it looks like. It has some darker brown areas and then some light, almost white areas. So it looks like this elevation map probably won't work too well. Uh, kind of. That's actually not that bad, I feel like. I think I'm going to go with that for Pluto. And then I do know that it has one moon called Sharon. And I it has a few more, but I can't remember their names. So for Sharon, let's do a random small moon. That looks like probably about the same, like probably like a good size because they're kind of almost binary with each other. And I feel like Sharon's orbit is almost like vertical. Oh, what does Sharon look like? It's kind of, I feel like it's a little tiny bit pink. I think I'm going to keep this size. So I'm guessing that it is 1.3% the moon's mass for Sharon. And then for our visuals, let's go like that. Okay, so that's my guess for Sharon orbiting Pluto. Okay, so here is my Pluto and my Sharon. That's what I'm guessing. And then here is the a picture of the real orbit of Pluto and Sharon. So there we go. So next we're going to do Ceres. Ceres, I'm pretty sure orbits between Mars and Jupiter. It's like an inner dwarf planet. Okay, I'm going to start with a random moon for it. We're going to put it I feel like it's a tiny bit elliptical like this. Oh, I have no idea what it looks like. That could be a good mass already. So two point. No, it's got to be smaller than the moon. We'll go 35% of the mass of our moon for Ceres. And then for our visuals, I'm kind of just going to go with like gray. Okay, so there's what I'm going to do for Ceres. I don't know how close I am. Okay, next I think I'm going to do Sedna. And I'm pretty sure Sedna is the furthest one out. And it has a highly elliptical orbit. So I think I'm going to put it like here. And then move it so that it's like super elliptical like this. Does it cross inside of Neptune's orbit? Maybe. I'm going to do it like that, I think. And I think pretty sure this one's red. At least in Universe Sandbox, I'm pretty sure this is the red one. And then for our mass, let's see what it's at right now. 1.3 times our moon. Let's go with 50% of our moon, maybe. And we'll make it red. Something like that, I'm guessing. All right, so there's Sedna orbiting. Okay, so here's my prediction for its orbit. And then here's the real orbit. All right. Okay, next I'm going to do Haumea, which I think is the one that has its own ring. It's a dwarf planet with its own ring. Pretty sure it's in the Kuiper Belt, so it's going to be a little bit past Pluto. So maybe here, I'm going to start with a random asteroid because its shape is sort of like elongated, I think, because it spins so fast. So let's adjust its motion and make it spin pretty quickly. Oh, oh no, I spun it so fast that it died. I think we can still use that though. Okay, mass compared to our moon, um, maybe like 1%. Oh, so this is going to need to go up a lot. That's 0.1%. 1%. Okay, so Universe Sandbox, you can't really do like elongated shapes yet. So I think we'll just kind of leave it like that. And this is going to be our Haumea. This one has a ring, I'm pretty sure. So let's give it a ring. Um, and it's just like a thin ring, I think. So we're going to... I'm going to have to do a custom ring on it. 
Yeah, like that. Look at that. Okay. So here's a, my Haumea versus the real one, or at least like what we think it looks like. Um, and I guess that it's 1% of our moon's mass. And then here's my orbit guess for it. It's this dark brown line a little bit past Pluto. And then here's the real orbit. Okay, now we're gonna do Eris. So Eris is actually the dwarf planet that when they discovered it, they declassified Pluto as a planet. So I'm pretty sure it's a tiny bit bigger than Pluto because of that, because they found it and it was bigger than Pluto. And then they're like, oh, so is this a planet too? And then they decided it wasn't. So then Pluto wasn't a planet either. Pretty sure it's also in the Kuiper belt somewhere. So where's Pluto right there? We're gonna put it between Haumea and Pluto and kind of give it an elliptical orbit, name it. Eris. And I have no idea what this one looks like. It's probably some like grayish color. And then for our size, we're going to do, what did we put Pluto at? Like 20% of the moon. We'll make this one 30%. 37.1% the size of our moon. I don't know how close that is. Guess I'll find out when I edit. And then here's my guess for its orbit. Not perfectly flat with the solar system. Um, a little bit past Pluto in the Kuiper Belt. Okay, and then the last dwarf planet I'm gonna try to do is Make Make, which I don't really know too much about. We're gonna put it in the Kuiper Belt also, do a slightly curved orbit, not perfectly flat, and we'll do it here. Okay, Make Make. And then for our mass guess, it's definitely gonna be smaller than some of these other ones. We're gonna go eight, no, five, five percent of the moon. So my guess is 5% the size of our moon for Make Make. And I have no idea what it looks like, so I'm actually just gonna leave it like this. Ah, uh, okay, so there's my guess for Make Make, and there's my orbit guess, this line here. And then here's the real orbit. So that's all the dwarf planets. So now we're gonna do real human objects, and I'm gonna guess where they are. So for those, you can't really make your own human objects. So I'm just going to use the real objects that are built into the game um, here. Like you can see all the different spacecraft, but I am still going to try to guess where they actually are. So I think I'm going to start with the Parker Solar Probe. So this was a probe that was used to study the sun. I'm pretty sure that its orbit is going to kind of be elliptical where the furthest out point is sort of by Earth. So I'm going to make it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it like this and then we just move it in so that the inner orbit is close to the sun. Oh, I think that its inner orbit would be closer. Move it around a little bit. Okay. That's my guess. So that the Parker solar probe, we can zoom in on it too. So this is a real model. So I already know that this is what it actually looks like. But my guess for its orbit is that it got really close to the sun at its closest point, And then its furthest point is sort of by Earth's orbit. So that's my guess for it. And then here's the real orbit of what, it, what its real orbit is like. Okay, now we're gonna do the Tesla Roadster. So if you didn't know, SpaceX launched a Tesla into space and it is orbiting around the sun. I do know it's not orbiting around Earth. So we're gonna have to find it on here. Where's the Tesla Roadster? Right here. So where's my guess for it? I feel like it's closest point is by Earth and it's furthest point is kind of like by Mars. So I'm gonna put this here and then we can move it to adjust its orbit. So it's kind of like that. That's my guess. Could totally be wrong with these or I could be right. My guess is that the Tesla Roadster's closest point is in Earth's orbit and its furthest point is by Mars's orbit. And here's the look at the car in game. Okay, and then here is the actual orbit of it compared to what I did. Okay, perfect. Okay, now we're going to do the Voyager spacecraft. These are two older spacecraft that have both left the solar system already. So I'm going to have to like put them out of the solar system. I'm pretty sure that Voyager 1 went up relative to the plane. So if like the solar system's flat like this, I'm pretty sure that Voyager 1 kind of went up and then Voyager 2 kind of went down. So let's, let's grab Voyager 1. I'm just gonna do still because I don't know how to make it like leave and put it right here above. Oh, we can change. Okay, here we go. Velocity kind of like, oh, we need to give it velocity. Okay, my guess on the speed of it, I guess we can kind of 4,000 meters per second that could totally be wrong yes okay that's my guess for voyager one that could be way farther than it actually is 
So my guess is that it's going up out of the solar system like that. And then for Voyager 2, we're going to do the same thing, but have it be going down. Okay. So that's my guess for Voyager 1 and Voyager 2's directions out of the solar system. And then here's their actual directions out, maybe. Now we're going to do the New Horizons spacecraft, which is, I feel like it's also leaving. I don't really know much about that one, but I know it's in the game. And I feel like that one's also leaving the solar system. So I'm going to put it here. I think it, it, I'm just gonna make it going flat. 4,000 meters per second also on that one is my guess. I have really no idea and we'll do that. So this is my guess for where it's going. And then here's the real direction that it's going. Okay, so now we only have, we're, the last two things we're gonna do are the Hubble Space Telescope and the James Webb Space Telescope. So I know that Hubble is in orbit of Earth. Let's go find Earth. I don't know why the moon is so elliptical. I don't know how that happened. Um, <laughs> we're just going to leave it. So Hubble is right here. Okay, my guess for how high it is is going to be... It can't be that high. Maybe 8,000 kilometers up. Yeah, we'll go 8,000 kilometers above the Earth is my guess for Hubble. And if we zoom in, you can see what it looks like. Yes. And then James Webb is actually... I don't know how we would do it because it kind of orbits in a unique way. I do know how it orbits. It, it's past the moon. It's orbiting the sun, but around the earth. So it's kind of like this. Oh, I don't know how I would get it to work because it doesn't really go around the earth. It's like, I guess I'll just put it here. Maybe that's close. Okay, so here is my semi-completed solar system. That's pretty much every object that it's like people would even know. I mean, there's a ton of like small asteroids and stuff. So here it is. Links in the description if you want to have this system for yourself and you can see how badly I did on it. I'm sure it's not great. I do know that a lot of things are wrong. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Leave suggestions for more things to do in Universe Sandbox or any game in the comments below. You guys are awesome. Thank you for watching.